Hello again, this is a vlogging test with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I wish that I could see what the hell is wrong with me, but I don't know I'm getting there, but it's getting so hard. I guess I should have known the way to let it go, but I don't know I'm getting there and it's breaking your heart. My wife has an appointment in Vienna today, so that's where we are headed. It's an ugly, foggy, cold day, so there's not much we can do with the corona rules. We can't even go have lunch, so it'll be a pretty boring trip. So I thought I'd make the best of it and use it to test the vlogging capabilities of the iPhone. 12 Pro Max. We'll be looking at the image quality, which I presume will be just fine, but especially the audio quality will be under scrutiny because the iPhone is rumored to be quite good in that regard. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this thing can do. reached the mountain top now we will start descending down into the plains of lower Austria that will lead us right to Vienna I guess you should have known the way to let me go but you don't now you're getting there and it's breaking my heart and then there was sun Apparently the north side of the Alps is a bit luckier when it comes to the weather at the moment. We haven't seen any sunshine in about two weeks. Here we are, Vienna in all its foggy and windy glory. As long as you 
So these were some very quick impressions of Vienna. As I said, there's nothing you can do. The shops have reopened, but all eateries are closed. You can't sit down anywhere. You can order food and take it away. Um, we didn't know where to order, so we went for McDonald's. We are really not McDonald's people, but in this situation, it seemed like the most sterile and safe option to just pick up your paper bag and eat it in the car. And then I guess we'll be heading home soon. My wife wants to go to another wool store. She's very much into crafting, knitting, weaving, all that. The reason we came to Vienna today is actually that she wanted to pick up a weaving loom. We've got that in the trunk now. And now she wants to go to a wool store and I'm taking every opportunity I can to evaluate the capabilities of the iPhone. I think so far it's doing pretty good. Right now, I think the white balance may be off a little, but it's hard. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting situation in here is a bit tough on it. There are neon lights in the parking garage and there's a warm light in inside the car. So not the easiest situation, but I think it's handling it pretty well. The front camera is not as great. So mostly I'm using the back camera, but I can't talk into it so well. So. This is a front camera test. How's the audio? I hope as good as announced. I hear you well enough. Yeah, but that's not on. Ah. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, onwards. We're driving past the famous Nashmarkt. It's a market where you can get all kinds of foods and fresh groceries. Very touristy these days and well, we're just driving past it. So stop number two, Ola is going shopping in a wool store and I will devour our very healthy McDonald's lunch. A quick tip for vlogging that I discovered on this first half day of using the iPhone 12 Pro Max for vlogging is that you can go into the camera app settings and change the default settings to preserve your camera mode when you switch to a different application and then switch back to the camera app. By default, it will always start in the photo mode. And when you're vlogging all day, it's quite inconvenient having to switch to video mode every time you start the camera app. So I highly recommend choosing this preserve settings option. So we're back. What's my opinion on vlogging with the iPhone 12 Pro Max? I think it's quite a convenient device to have. It's not perfect, but it's something that you always have with you. And that is the big strength of smartphones in general. What makes the iPhone a good vlogging camera in my mind is that the sound quality coming out of this thing is really quite acceptable. You saw the samples I brought home from this trip and I think the sound quality is all right. It's not as good as with a dedicated microphone and there are ways of connecting dedicated microphones to a phone. But for me, that is missing the point because if I want to vlog with this thing, for me, this is about convenience, quickly grabbing it, not having to set up. And if you have a microphone, then you need to fiddle with plugs again. And then I can just as well take a dedicated vlogging camera, which I still will keep doing quite often. But this is something to use when there's nothing else around, when I don't have my cameras with me. And then I think the sound quality out of the iPhone 12 Pro Max is just fine. The stabilization I'm quite happy with iPhones are known to offer great stabilization. They have been doing so for years and this one is probably even better a little bit. 
Although I don't have a direct comparison because I haven't used iPhones in probably eight years or so. My last iPhone was the iPhone 3S, 3GS, whatever it was called. Um, and I stayed away from them because I didn't think they offered the best value and I had a lot of Android phones in the meantime. Now I'm back mostly because I prefer to have an all Apple workflow and because the iPhone 12 Pro Max is just a very nice overall package. Image quality is great until the light goes away. In low lights, the video quality isn't great as you could see. And something that is really a weakness of this phone is the terrible flaring it shows when pointing the camera at lights in the darkness. Then you have a lot of reflections which are supposed to come from these protective glass covers that are in front of the lenses. Don't plan on filming your Christmas tree with this camera. The reflections of those lights are so annoying that I don't think that you can really use the results. Nevertheless, I'm happy I bought this phone and I will be using it for vlogging when I have nothing else with me. I think it works quite well. And if you're just starting out with vlogging and you don't have any other devices at your disposal yet, then I think this is easily good enough. There are filmmakers who use this to create cinematic movies. I think it's quite capable and all around a good device with some weaknesses. So that's it for this time. This was just a quick first look. There will be more about this device in the future as well as other camera and content creation talk. If you like this video, I'd appreciate your thumbs up and your subscription. And don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any new videos. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on this channel next time.